Hello, and welcome to Experience Girls. Oh, mate, that's dark. What's going on here? Well, we're looking at the most grimdark of grimdark franchises, and that is Warhammer 40k. And specifically, we're looking at Warhammer 40k Mechanicus, which is just about coming out now on consoles after being on PC for some time. Brought to us by Bulwark Games and uh, another studio called Casado Games. Uh, and basically, this is the, this is the the latest Warhammer game in what I can only describe as a tidal wave of Warhammer games. That a few years ago, Games Workshop were quite precious with their license. And if you look at big franchises like I don't know Star Wars or whatever, usually when they open them up to video game production, they kind of pick a studio, don't they? They pick a publisher or a yeah. developer, and they go, "Hey, you guys." You guys are going to make our games, right? That's like every every license you can imagine does it like this, mm. pretty much. Except the Games Workshop boys and Warhammer, where they've just kind of opened it up to anybody with an idea to pitch them. That's half decent has mm. made a video game in the last sort of like eight eight or so years. Like, and there are so many. There's like four or five or six maybe already on this generation of console. There's even more, probably twice that on PC. Um, they're, they're absolutely inundated with it. I think that's kind of fascinating. That none of them I've, that I've played have been terrible, but many of them have been unremarkable. Like there's there's Chaos Bane, for example, which is a Diablo ripoff uh, on console, and it's fine and it works as an ARPG. There's Inquisitor, which is a four, Warhammer 40k kind of one, which is also on console, which is a lot like Diablo. It's an action RPG, top down, lots of gore, lots of shooting. That's that's fun. And what we've got here with Mechanicus is a kind of X com derivative uh, and it's not it's not bad and it does some things that are unique and it is set in a kind kind of the more interesting element of 40k now what do you know richard about 40k and the universe of warhammer um in the, the big future imperium setting do you know anything about it at all or have you only ever just touched around the periphery um don't tell anyone i've done that but yes i have touched around the periphery and I don't know a great deal, so I dabbled in it a little bit as a kid, mainly just to paint the figures and stuff, you know. Um, but I don't know loads about it. I just quite like the aesthetic of Warhammer stuff. Yeah, same. Pretty cool. Absolutely. I, I never had the patience for the figures because I remember as a kid walking into Games Workshop and seeing these amazing figurines looking incredible, and then you buy them and they look like shit, and you have to paint them yourself. And when you yeah. try and paint them yourself, you can't. And mine were always either black or red. Mono, monochromatic basically they, they, they'd be one color or nothing um, was, that's basically <laughs> as far as I get with it and I've got some friends who really got into it and are very very good model painters and have made some amazing looking figurines it's just not my area of ability but like you said the the, the aesthetic the universe yeah. uh, I find really compelling so I'll often jump in with some enthusiasm and check out the video games because it is a very distinct grim dark uh, science fiction uh, setting that we have here with 40k basically it's this sort of extrapolated from a kind of a roman empire concept out yes. into the god the god emperor and then the, you know these guys in mechanicus you play as the tech priests so you're this kind of mixture of high technology futuristic ability but also you're dogmatic and you're like constrained by like religious ideology as well and it's it, it's quite an interesting setting and what i liked about this that there, there is a lot of law there is a lot of dialogue and um and like written cutscenes between the missions uh, and it's all been written by uh, one of the authors who actually writes the novels for the black library which are the official uh, books in the warhammer universe and you can tell it's not just thrown together by developers you can tell there is some actual writing ability in here and it actually does a really good job of throwing you into the universe and trust me it doesn't hold your hand you're not explained everything actually you barely explained anything and you kind of have to just glean a lot through context and yeah. it's full of like made up words and made up terms and you know that really helps couch you in that world and while it's bewildering it's also kind of exciting and it's mysterious and and you basically in mechanicus you're, you've gone to this world something's going on with the universe and it's all falling apart and you're basically on this planet trying to deal with these like machine race that are resurrecting and that are gonna like mess you up with their high tech and you have to stop them getting off the planet and it's kind of your goal as these tech priests to contain this uh, heretical technology which is brilliant like it's mad what a cool setting really really good fun 
Uh, and the gameplay, like I mentioned earlier, is this XCOM derivative. So it's uh, turn-based, it's action point based. There's no like Overwatch mechanic in this because it's a bit stripped back. Um, but at the same time, there are elements that do feel unique. Like you don't know, for example, how effective the enemy is. You have to like, s um, how many health points they have. You have to scan them by sending out these little floating skulls, which are these servitors, which go out and like scan things. They're gonna interact with things on the map around you. Um, and you're basically like leading a squad which will consist of a certain number of tech priests but then also kind of like cannon fodder enemies and it's interesting because that's a very warhammer thing is that there are the important dudes which you need to keep alive and then there's the expendable fodder and like, your own men that you just don't give a shit about that you can yeah. basically create infinite amounts of and just throw at the enemy just to clog them up until your main heavy hitters can get in and that in this case it's tech priests sometimes that might be space marines and things like that but basically everybody else is just expendable in this universe and treated like shit because of it is that the same sort of deal on both sides then because i'm just coming at this from the last warhammer game i played was space hulk tactics and that's very much an asymmetric game where you've got a finite amount of space marines and then the opposing side is like you say almost infinite gene stealers spilling out of the walls so it's a different play style on each so, side so no yeah it, it is a different play style but actually this is more like on the good guy side you have expendable forces yeah so it's 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 because there's, there's a lot of different shit going on in the warhammer 40k universe so like the, the tech priests aren't space marines but they're like powerful in their own way so one of the cool things in this game is that you can really customize your tech priests so that they're, they're they're sort of um randomly generated but you then get to like really build them out down various different uh skill paths they may be focused on uh damage dealing they may be focused on like a uh, xeno understanding of the enemies or the doctrines and stuff that you're dealing with and you can therefore really put them down uh, specialized routes and level them up as you go and they get more and more powerful and they're, and they're like they're like your units that you care about like they're like your squad mates in XCOM but you know in addition to that you have this the co part of the cohort are these expendable enemies which you uh, actually will get like action points for them when they get killed you actually get like a buff from it like they're just good for getting murdered and it's like you're learning you're basically the, the justification is you learn more about the enemy's abilities when they die based on how they are killed therefore you get knowledge which you can then use um as like the currency in the missions to actually do more effective attacks and do things like that so it's really <laughs> messed up but it, 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 yeah. it's a unique mechanic and it works very well within the 40k universe um like i said there's this very kind of I could barely explain to you the overarching plot because I don't think I understand it. Like, I'm sure if you're a massive Warhammer guy that you're really into this, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's this, this, that. Oh, that makes perfect sense. But, you know, on this planet, you know, there, there's a couple of layers to the way the gameplay works. So I've mentioned there's the kind of obfuscated customization element uh, in which you're like, you know, building out the team, building out the squad, giving them abilities, giving them powers. You then obviously have the direct XCOM gameplay type stuff, which is the turn-based combat. And then in addition to that, you have like an over map which are these tombs and stuff under the planet's surface which you're moving around. So you're choosing which rooms your guys are going into, you're discovering stuff, you're discovering artifacts, Do you? and then it's like you have a multiple choice thing of how do you deal with the things you discover. So there's like, are you gonna be pious and down the doctrine route? Are you just gonna blow it up or set fire to it with a flamethrower? Are you gonna calmly and try, kind of like uh, patiently explore it and try and understand it? And all of that will give you different um, responses and reactions which will affect the game in very Various ways you might get extra currency uh, for customization you might get penalized and that comes in this alert level thing where as, as you take more time to explore the tombs the enemies become more aware that you're there therefore they get maybe increase in number or increase in ability so you know it's a risk reward situation uh, or maybe you'll just get penalized with a, like a, a a damage uh, sort of attack on some of your units and as you are going through these um, tombs you have pro your, your health points progress between each encounter so once you're out everything goes back to back to normal but you also have this idea that you know you you you've got 12 health points you're down to 10 down to 7 and you're carrying that into each combat encounter so there is this idea that you need to try and maintain your readiness and your ability so you might not want to explore everything because it's a risk reward situation because you could go into a room take some damage which will then carry into a more important fight which you might then subsequently lose because you weren't prepared properly so there's some nice mechanics at play here there's some interesting interactive between the systems which i thought was kind of impressive and, and 
a bit deeper than I expected at first blush. When I first started playing this game on tutorial modes and stuff like that, this seemed very simplistic XCOM, but actually once you get into it, there's a lot more going on, and it's actually quite a challenging experience. And I was actually enjoying myself in spite of not really knowing anything about what was going on. Well, um, I don't know if I've got any questions for you, Ben, because it sounds as you've played a fair bit of it and it's almost impenetrable to you beyond you know how you've engaged with it and you've enjoyed it i don't know have, have you compl can you compare it to any other did you play space hulk yeah i play space hulk tactics um which is that it's much sort of slower in a way than this game because that is turn-based as well yeah uh, and you're going but the environments are much more like funneled and tight which is a, a fun gameplay experience in this in itself but this is a bit more open um yeah. it's a bit more like i said like like XCOM, but the the rounds that can be played, you know, very aggressively and very quickly. Whereas in Space Hulk Tactics, you're much more about, you know, covering lanes of fire and like protecting your flanks, aren't you? And sort of, it's almost defensive, defensive in its play style. Whereas this is much more offensive. They they do have some comparison. I think they're both they're both good games in their in their own right. Like I said, but this one gives you a lot more uh, customization and a lot more uh, freedom to really choose your own way through it. That, like I said, there's a lot of narrative in this game, and at times it almost feels like a choose your own adventure game. You've got like loads of dialogue. You've got these multiple sort of uh, tech priest commanders uh, as like the story givers, and they all interact with each other, and they all like debating with each other, and they all give you different missions as well. So they're the mission givers, so you can pick what missions to do in what order from these different commanders. And like one's the super religious guy, the pious one, and then the other one's the the tech, the super science guy, and then the ones like the main military commander. And they've all got kind of different strength and weaknesses and, and therefore the missions give you different types of rewards as well based on who you go with so there's a lot of flexibility as, as to how you approach the game which is pretty cool actually and one thing I mentioned is that we're reviewing the console edition here and I think actually the control mapping to the controllers obviously this is predominantly you can tell it comes from a PC developer perspective but yeah I think the, co the console port is decent you know it's not perfect it did take me a little bit of getting used to with the controls sometimes I found that the weirdest thing for me is in an XCOM game generally when you move and have an ability to shoot you'll get a big button that's like do you want to attack in this game you have to push the right trigger which brings up the sub menu of of your kind of character that you currently have selected and that character might have a melee weapon he might have a couple of ranged weapons it depends on your loadout but then you need to then sort of pick the specific weapon you want to try and attack with it will then give you the chances of hit and stuff and the ability and the damage types of um what you can do with that weapon it's not All just right. like it's not just like you have one gun like in XCOM you have your gun and that's yeah. what you're attacking with and this you have much more varied loadouts so you you've got various abilities and tech you can use and weapons and melee and range and it all depends on how you spec your character out like I I, I spec out my tech priest I had a very dedicated ranged damage dealing character he didn't have any melee attack so I was all about you know keeping enemies at range and you actually interesting when you get too close to an enemy you can't use range weapons so you have to use melee so you haven't if you haven't built a character for that you have to really you know get stuck and you have to maneuver them away and maybe try and kite them into the the, the melee weapon uh, using characters and stuff like that so there's there's a lot of depth here there's a lot of depth a lot of customization um, and a lot of flexibility as to how you approach the game and i was yeah quite impressed with all of that and that like i said cool. it's it's i think the lore stuff will be super rewarding and engaging um, to anyone that's massively into 40k because I, I know this side of it is is compelling you know you've got the space marine side you've got the inquisitor side and then you've got the tech priest side so there's lots going on uh, with the tech priest stuff here. and I don't think it's ever really been touched upon before in a video game form so I think there'll be some real fans of what they're doing here can you is this multiplayer as well I didn't see any multiplayer no okay well, fingers crossed there's something in there that would be cool but sounds like they've done a good job then even though they are scattering their development to every developer um that could possibly come out of the cracks by the sounds of it basically yes yeah. I, th I think it's a case of the shotgun approach you know if you yeah, they're, they're happy they're happy to roll the dice as it were <laughs> yes absolutely right so that's a uh, another episode of experience kills i hope you've enjoyed listening to us talk about warhammer 40k mechanicus which is out now if you're listening or watching this video on basically all the console platforms and pc 
Uh, until next time, we have been Experience Kills. I've been Ben. You can find me at D-I-Y-E on Twitter. You can find Richard at Colonel Red on Twitter. You can find us in general as the Gestalt at Experience Kills on Twitter. Uh, in other places, you might find our cohort is, of course, on the YouTube channel. So please give us a like and subscribe on there. That is all we ask for. It means a lot to us and really helps get our videos out to the masses. Uh, and you can also listen to all of these as podcasts instead of watching the video form if you don't have time to watch the video. And those can be found on iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere a good podcast can be found. So until next time, Richard, let's suit up and go kill us some heretical machines. No, I think we mentioned on that one. <laughs> Just I thing. thought you were summing up. I don't know what you wanted to say. Should I do a, like a bang bang or something? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it just sounds off the cuff, man. Like, roll with it, baby. Okay, bang bang. There you go. <laughs> you, you'd be dead. Bye. <laughs>